Mr. Recap here. Today, I will show you a comedy horror film from 2009 titled Jennifer's Body. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The film starts with Anita Needy Lesnicki as an inmate in a mental asylum. In her chart she is described as violent and has injured many physicians. This one time a physician asks her what food she wants to eat. When Needy said she likes toastum, the physician is worried Needy might not be able to get the right nutrients and recommends something else. Before she could finish her sentence, she kicks the physician and becomes violent. Two guards wrestle her and put her inside the solitary confinement. Inside, she recollects the story of how she got inside the mental asylum, beginning with having been friends with Jennifer Check and how she isn't always so violent like this. The song Through the Trees plays over the speaker and she gets annoyed as she puts her hands over her ears to avoid hearing it. Needy was best friends with Jennifer, despite having little to no similarities. Jennifer was a popular cheerleader while Needy was a studious, normal girl. They were residing at Devil's Kettle, a small town named after mysterious falls where the water was said to never come out. One night, Jennifer invited Needy to go with her to the local town pub, Melody Lane. She said that an indie band, Low Shoulder, was to play there, and Jennifer found the lead vocalist Salty, her own term for being handsome. Needy's boyfriend, Chip, remarked that the pub was for old people, but Jennifer insists. He also added that Needy always did whatever Jennifer told her to do, but she corrects him that she did things because they both liked the same things. This implied that Jennifer was a little difficult in her friendship with Needy. When they were at the pub, the officer Roman saw them. Jennifer's interaction with the cops suggested that they have had an intimate contact, but then Needy interrupts them when she saw the band coming out of the backstage to prepare for their number. They approached the band, and Jennifer flirted with Nikolai, the lead singer of the band. She offered them to buy drinks, and when she went off to the bar Needy went to the arcade area. From there she heard the band talking about Jennifer, specifically Nikolai making assumptions that Jennifer was a virgin. Needy thought that he wants to get on Jennifer's pants, so she approached them to tell them that Jennifer's her best friend, that she was a virgin, and gave him a piece of her mind about sleeping with creeps. Then she walked towards Jennifer to warn her about Nikolai, but the latter shrugged it off. She confessed that she wasn't completely a virgin anymore, saying that she's not even a backdoor virgin anymore, thanks to Roman. Needy laughed at her friend, and at that time the band starts singing their song through the trees. While they were singing, something in the backstage sparked and caused a small fire, which then spread throughout the stage. In no time, the pub was engulfed in fire. Needy and Jennifer escaped through the window in the restroom. Jennifer looked as if in a daze and stared straight ahead. Nikolai approached them, offering Jennifer a glass of liquor to calm her nerves. Then he invited her inside the band's van. Needy stopped her, but Jennifer seemed to be still in a daze, and came along with Nikolai. The van drove off, leaving Needy desperate and worried. Behind her the pub burned down to ashes. When she got home, Needy immediately called her boyfriend Chip, telling him what happened. Chip asked her if she was okay, and she said yes, when she heard the doorbell ring. She asked Chip to stay with her on the phone while she went down to see who it was. To her puzzlement, no one was at the door, so she bade goodbye to Chip. Needy was about to go back upstairs when she heard sounds coming from the kitchen. When she investigated, she saw that the tap was not turned off properly. She went to turn it off, and when she turned around she saw Jennifer, all messy and bloody. She looked deranged. When Needy asked her what happened, Jennifer just smiled a creepy smile before going to the refrigerator to rummage for food. When she saw a roast chicken, she chomped on it, but suddenly screamed with an inhumane voice, and then threw up in front of Needy, spewing her not only with chewed chicken bits but with black muck that somehow formed needles. Needy was in shock to see her friend like this. Jennifer laughed like crazy, and this scared Needy. She ran to get her phone, but Jennifer caught up with her, and slammed her on the wall. She was about to take a bite of Needy's neck, but she stopped short, let go of Needy, and went out of the house. The next day at school, Jennifer seemed to be normal, as if nothing happened last night. Needy told Chip about her encounter with Jennifer, but he didn't believe her. Their teacher announced the tragedy that happened to Melody Lane, and enumerated the people that lost their lives including their Indian exchange student and their football player Craig, but Jennifer looked nonchalant about it. Near them, the football captain team Jonas was sobbing hard, because his friend Craig died in the fire last night. Later that afternoon, Jonas was standing on the football field, remembering his friend, when Jennifer approached him. She seduced him, inviting him to the woods. As they make out, animals started to gather around them. Jonas was startled to see them, and Jennifer remarked that he was about to see his friend soon. Then she attacked him and ripped off his guts. Their teacher heard his screams, and when he looked into the woods he saw Jonas' lifeless body on the ground being eaten by animals. He called the police and Jonas' parents. At the nearby lake Jennifer was swimming naked, apparently unconcerned about what she did. Meanwhile, through the radio Needy heard that the band Low Shoulder was praised for their heroism in trying to save people from the fire. 
Needy was exasperated, as she knew this wasn't the case, and that the band was just using the tragedy to promote themselves. Later that night Jennifer calls Needy, telling her she was feeling good. Needy responded that she was still feeling sad about the tragedy. Jennifer told her to move on and insulted the people that died. Needy was in disbelief to hear Jennifer say those things, but the latter continued telling her that she was having the best time of her life. An incoming call cut their conversation, it was Chip calling Needy to meet him at the park. While they talked, Jennifer lit a lighter and scorched her tongue with it. She didn't feel any pain, and her tongue healed in record time. Needy got back with Jennifer to tell her she had to go, but Jennifer told her that she's a god, and that Chip looked interesting, and asked her rude things about him. Needy hung up. In the park, Chip met her and told her that Jonas was murdered and found in the woods. She stated that this incident, and the fire at Melody Lane were no coincidences, and she was convinced that something creepy was happening in their town. A month passed and the students at their school were slowly moving on from the tragedies that happened, except for Jennifer, who seemed to be enjoying the most of her life. The world became fascinated with the events at Devil's Kettle. Meanwhile, the band Low Shoulder rose through fame, and even dedicated the song Through the Trees, the one they sang on the night of the fire, to the town. One day, in class, the teacher announced that it was the one-month commemoration of the tragedy and Jonah's death, when Jennifer suddenly blurted out that it was boring. Needy noticed that Jennifer looked tired as if she hadn't slept for days, and breakouts were visible on her skin. In the hallway, Jennifer said that she felt like other normal girls, and that maybe it was just wearing off. Needy asked what was wearing off, but Colin Gray approached and greeted them. Colin tried to ask Jennifer out. At first she refused, but later on changed her mind and told him that she'd text him her address. Meanwhile Chip asked Needy to hang out with him at his house that night with innuendos that he wanted to have sex with her. Needy agreed. Later that night, Colin was driving around looking for the address Jennifer texted him. The address led him to a dark neighborhood, and a flickering light was seen on the upstairs window of Jennifer's house. He entered the house and noticed that the place looked like it was under construction. He called out for Jennifer. He heard music playing from one room. He entered it and found it full of lit candles. When he turned around, Jennifer was standing there. Colin looked apprehensive about the setup of the place and asked Jennifer about it. But Jennifer only kissed him. At one point he saw Jennifer's eyes turn to slits and he became afraid. He tried to get away from her but he walked back into a sharp object and pierced his hand. Jennifer suddenly grabbed his hand, broke it and pushed him to the ground. She said that she needed him frightened before devouring his guts. Meanwhile, Needy and Chip were having an intercourse at his bedroom when Needy suddenly saw visions of blood on the ceiling, and a bleeding Jonas sitting on the chair with Jennifer sitting cat-like behind him, smiling eerily. Needy, sensing that something dreadful must have happened, screamed, and they both stopped in the middle of the act. Chip asked her what's wrong, and immediately Needy got up and ran out of the house. She rode her car and drove off. Along the way she saw Jennifer full of blood and almost hit her. When she arrived at her home, she went to her room and plopped on the bed, tired of what was happening around her. Suddenly Jennifer was at her bed. She tried to seduce Needy but was unsuccessful. She then proceeded to tell her what happened to her that night she rode on Low Shoulders' van. She recalled that the band took her to the falls where she was sacrificed as a virgin for the band's fame and fortune. Jennifer added that she didn't remember anything after that, except that she went straight to Needy's house. She was hungry that night, and when she left Needy's house she saw the Indian exchange student, who became her first victim. Jennifer also told Needy that when she's full, she's unkillable and her injuries would heal fast. Needy asked other questions, but instead, Jennifer gaslighted her and told her to get herself checked. She also implied that Chip may be having second thoughts about her because of this. Needy felt angry and told Jennifer to get out. She did by jumping out of Needy's window. The next day, Needy attended the funeral of Colin Gray. His friends exclaimed some poetic lines as an attempt to pay tribute to Colin, but his mother contradicted them and described how she found her son like a lasagna with teeth, and that she's feeling the pain for losing him. This prompted Needy to go to the library to search for answers about Jennifer's condition. She found out about virgin sacrifices to Satan in exchange for whatever the person wished for. She also found out that if the woman sacrificed was not a complete virgin, the spell would still push through, but the devil would reside within the body of the female sacrifice. To keep living, the female must eat human flesh. In addition, Needy read that the devil was weak when hungry, and a stab through the heart would kill the devil and its host. She realized that Jennifer wasn't exactly a virgin when she was sacrificed, thus the devil lived inside her and caused her to eat human flesh. She told all of this to Chip, who again didn't believe her. She warned her boyfriend to not attend the spring dance at their school as she's afraid Jennifer would go after him. But Chip understood differently. He thought Needy was breaking up with him. Needy was already at the dance waiting for Jennifer to appear. On the other hand, however, Chip still dressed up for the dance but went to the park instead. To his surprise he saw Jennifer there. She tried to convince Chip that Needy was cheating on him with Colin. He was in disbelief but later on gave in to Jennifer's seduction. She led him to an abandoned pool, where she attacked him. At the dance, Needy realized that Jennifer was never going to be there, so she 
went to Chip's house to check on him. To her horror, his mom told her that he already left and that he was at the park. Needy ran there and saw the orchid corsage that he was supposed to give her that night. Then she heard Chip's screams coming from the abandoned indoor pool. When she got there, she saw Jennifer biting Chip's neck, giving him a fatal wound. She jumped into the pool, grabbed her by the hair and drowned her. Even so, they saw Jennifer swam towards them. Chip handed Needy a pepper spray, which she used to distract Jennifer so they could get out of the pool. Enraged, Jennifer's body flew out of the pool and walked towards them. At this point Needy told Jennifer that she was never really a good friend, and asked her if coming for Chip was just to tick her off or that Jennifer's really insecure. At the last word Jennifer denied being insecure, but Needy enumerated things that proved otherwise. Enraged, Jennifer declared that she's coming for Needy as well. Needy thought Jennifer was only after boys, to which she replied, I go both ways, before being speared in the tummy by Chip using a pointed pool cleaner. Wounded, Jennifer left the place. Chip died due to blood loss. Later that night Needy decided to attack Jennifer. She thought that since Jennifer had not eaten yet, she had a chance to end her. She saw her lying on the bed watching the television. She jumped through the window and got on top of Jennifer. Bringing out a box cutter, Needy swung it towards Jennifer's chest but she was able to fend it off. They fought, Jennifer levitating both of them towards the ceiling. During the scuffle, she managed to bite Needy. In the end, Needy harshly pulled the necklace that was the sign of their friendship, and drove the box cutter through her heart. Jennifer's mother came to her room and saw Needy on top of her daughter, pulling out the box cutter. She ran towards them, pushed Needy aside and cradled her dead daughter's body. Back to the present where Needy is in the solitary confinement, she realizes she has super strength and the ability to levitate due to the bite Jennifer gave her. She escapes the mental asylum, and goes to where the band Low Shoulder is performing. Later on, newspapers reported the murders of the band members inside the hotel they were staying at. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch videos like this. Thanks for watching.